here, 1v1, outer reaches, blue side. We've got Man of Faith, also known as Tex, rocking a Warlock, a melee spellcaster that can leap into combat. Some powerful support and disruption options later on. Up against red side, Rice Muncher, as a force commander, very good offense, fights in melee combat, can also tank, disrupt and support with buffs. Outer reaches then, pretty strong map, I think, for Eldar. Can try and control the middle with set up teams and maybe some rangers and then get your webway action going on to help you reach this very kind of out of the way contested vp all the way in the northeast there the players have their natural vps towards the southeast here and towards the northwest tex with some howling banshees on the field will be looking to get in on those tactical marines early on we might see it right here in fact catches them rice bunch of doing the right thing and just getting the hell out of there Force Commander not around to help with his battle cry disruption there. Gets double scouts up. Might see double shotguns, I think, against the Warlock with Banshees. It's a pretty good idea. Banshees will try and take this contested powder. We'll be harassed by these scouts. Their bolters don't do a huge amount of damage. Banshees, though, don't want to take that damage. Leaping into combat, as you see. I think that leap into combat is set to be removed in the next update. Just going to get a melee charge back, I guess. Scout some capping duty here. Might run into that Warlock after he's taken that VP. Going to be an early 2-1 to one for Tex. He likes to put the VP pressure on and keep it on. Marines back out of base. Taking shots at the Banshees. Close to dropping a model, I think. Depending on how those shots have been spread out. You see these very narrow walkways. These ramps leading to the middle, which can lead to some nasty retreat kills. Banshees are obviously great at that. With their power melee on retreat against the heavily armoured marines. Guarded weapon team on the way for Tex. Will he, bring, he might just bring it all the way up here immediately to contest this VP. This is not a good fight for Rice Munch. I needs to back off here. Warlock and our Avengers and Banshees just with scout backup. They do have their shotguns. But I still don't think it's worth engaging. Is he waiting for his marines? Marines are in play. He's engaging. And immediately regrets it. Runs away. There's a shotgun blast. Knocking back the Warlock and the Banshees. But only suppressing the Banshees. I think it only suppresses the target. Our Avengers in a bad place here. Actually did pretty well. Considering. He, I mean his Marines are still in play. Those guys are behind heavy cover though. And here comes the Warlock. To knock him over with his leap. No it must be on cooldown. Does get a nice special though, knocking down all three marines. But I don't think he'll get a model. Shuriken in retreat path. Taking a lot of damage as they get close to it, although they are in retreat, so they're alright. Scouts being caught. These guys do not have their shotguns, and we do have Devastators on the field for Rice Muncher, helping him control that Warlock and those Howling Banshees. Rangers hitting the field. Pretty interesting little unit, I think, these days. A lot more of a focus on their utility through disruption, suppression and infiltration rather than straight up killing models with their long range shots. Although their damage can't be fully discounted, they are getting their Pathfinder gear which they really do need to I think to be useful. Gives them the infiltration to um, themselves and also dropping that, what is it called? Holofield, there we go. And ups their courage damage so they can suppress a lot better with their shots. And they can... Kind of patrol this bottom here, harass things that are trying to get this power. Going to turn and get shots on. We'll see if they get a model after a few of them. How long these marines stick around for. No shots. There we go. Let's get a maximum range if you can. Oh, they shot another model. That's pretty annoying. Shotgun scouts. Lost a lot of health, but they're alright. That arrow is still there, get rid of that. And contested VP turns blue again. 471 to 482. Very close on the VPs early on. Pensive start for both players, I think. Devastator is getting caught out of position there, not set up. Warlock leaping in, getting his merciless Witchblade on the field. Awesome melee weapon. Drains energy, does good damage, and you can knock back with its ranged attack. All awesome stuff, and that's all awesome stuff that you don't need to spend energy on. Those are all passive bonuses from this thing. Got his champion's robe now too. So he's going to be a pain in the ass to deal with early on. Dangerous melee weapon and a little bit of tankiness. 
a Sunk Marine sitting in the field. They're going to think twice about jumping in, I think, against a Merciless Witchblade Warlock and Howling Banshees. These Banshees do have their aspect of strength, by the way. Some more health, and their Exarch in Tier 2, if she appears, will have the Spear. Shotgun Blast doesn't knock over the Warlock because he had his shield up, I think. But he's retreating right into these Devastators. That's going to be sought. Are they going to get a full ba power bash here? We're pretty close to it. At least all the gens down, maybe. Banshees are going for all gens. Supported by that guarding weapon team. And now, looking to get in on the marines. Nice special attack. Not sure what he was trying to do moving up there. Trying to stop them bashing the power, I guess. But down it goes. There's the jump from the assault marines. 400 hit points each of heavy infantry armor. And that very nice disruption. Get into the face of the ranged units. Banshee's getting a sneaky decap on his fully matured wreck point. Does Tex go tier 2 with this? Or does he get another shuriken up to try and layer against the assault marines? I mean, tier 2 into a Wraith Lord would be great, but uh, much easier said than done. Doesn't yet have the power to start going tier 2, let alone getting a Wraith Lord on the field. Talking about decapping fully matured wreck points, here's the Force Commander. Plus 30 being the maximum a wreck point will give you per minute in a 1v1 fight. Rangers getting knocked back and shot up here. Run away, there we go. Didn't actually drop a model. Banshees have been really effective so far. Seem to be avoiding damage a lot, just on the prowl. Good positioning so far from those ladies. 468 to 415. Assault Marines taking the contested VP. 4 to 2 to 1. Again, very even on VPs. Full gen farm for Tex. Haven't really seen it threatened. But here's the Force Commander doing his battle cry buffing on those Assault Marines. He's got all of his energy drained as you saw there from the Merciless Switchblade. There's the jump on the Shuriken. Main Banshees, I should say, not really there to take advantage of the jump. They're all the way in the, in the uh, southwest right now. There are Avengers without their aspects going into Tier 2. Not often you'll see that another option you can use to deter assault marines or punish those jumps is drop a grenade at their feet devs on the field though stopping those banshees doing what they want when they want and actually getting them off the field there warlock wants to get in nice disruption at long range from the rangers with their disruptive shot kinetic pulse i believe it's called Gets them all off the field there. The Warlock in your face will do that. Tier 2 for both players. A little bit early off for Tex. But uh, what will he get? He's got loads of requisition. Might get some Dark Creepers up or something. Still a level 1 Warlock and it's still a level 1 Force Commander too. Not a lot of losses. Both sides. In fact, did Rice Muncher drop any models in Tier 1? Oh, he's dropped a Scout here. Don't think he dropped any Marines. Preserved these units pretty well. Ranges of some more annoying disruption. Didn't quite finish that cap though. And it is Dark Creepers on the way for Man of Faith or Tex. Those guys with Inferno damage these days, not Plasma. Inferno is not quite as effective at Plasma at dealing with heavy infantry. It does, uh, I think it's 25% more damage rather than the 50% more you'd get from Plasma. Also doesn't do full damage to heroes i think plasma does not entirely sure also not as effective against super heavy armor inferno damage doesn't actually do any bonus damage against super heavy infantry i believe although it, it does do full damage so it's still a still a decent thing to shoot them but plasma gets that 50 percent bonus to super heavy also much more specialized than inferno damage and here we see those dark creepers going off those Devastators, that's for sure, and alongside the Rangers, pretty scary thing for Devastators to deal with because of that disruption as well. Warlock on decapping duty on this VP. 393-415, the VPs continue to be closed. Dreadnought on the way for Rice Muncher. Tex with another Shuriken. Good choice, I think. Can transition one of them into a Bright Knight, so that might not be enough to deal with the Dreadnought. You might need to transition both. Didn't get fire dragons up. Here's that dreadnought. Starts off as a full-on 
melee bruiser for the Space Marines with those two close combat weapons, giving it 100 heavy melee DPS and a 40 damage splash on hit. As well as that flamer too, which is pretty damn useful. 1200 hit points. Can get a nice tier 3 upgrade to boost itself. Dark Age of Technology. And of course a pretty tasty assault cannon, which we might see. Against all this ranged Eldar stuff, although it is a fantastic deterrent to the Banshees in its current state, who are hiding in the ruins over there. Tex going northeast with quite a sizable army, wants his VP right now. Big hits on retreat from that Dreadnought, inspiring allied units as it kills stuff in melee. You see the inspiration buff on those assault marines there. Stacks up, I think. A lot of ways to buff units, haven't they, Space Marines? Got the battle cry from the Force Commander. We got the on hit inspiration, or on kill inspirations, I should say, from the Terminators and the Dreadnought. And the Librarian also does that, I believe. Speaking of Force Commanders, he's got the Thunderhammer now. Really, really bad news for the Banshees. I mean, are they going to be able to still be effective here with a Dreadnought on the field, shotgun scouts, and a Thunderhammer Force Commander? He's also getting a teleporter pack, so he's going to be looking to get into. The back lines of the Eldar, those Dark Creepers and those Bright Lances, he's got double Bright Lances up. Has Tex, did a hell of a lot of damage as you can see there, to the Dreadnought too. Almost down to half hit points in a few shots. Salt Marines do not have their Sergeant yet in Tier 2. It would make them much bigger threat to the Banshees too. But he's using them mostly for disruption at the moment, not melee fights. Tactical Marines being caught by the Warlock, being used very well in Tier 2 at the moment. Being annoying and de decapping that VP, keeping it occupied. Are you going to get suppressed? Eventually they got suppressed and run away from the jump. And now the Assault Marines run away. They want some health back. They're pretty low, going to drop a model soon. Dreadnought has, has been um, repaired up by Double Scouts and moves back to the power here. Double Bright Lancers continue to be set up though. I guess he's not going to actually use the Dreadnought to bash. Can move up and try and disrupt with the Shotgun Blast maybe, but here's the Force Commander teleporting in. And that crazy, crazy special attack from the Thunder Hammer disrupting absolutely everything there. And almost one shot in those Dire Avengers. Wow. That seemed to do so, so much damage there. We saw some suppression from the Rangers. Dark Creepers can also suppress with their pinning fire. They need their aspect for that though, I believe. Dreadnought is now bashing the node, which is good for him. He's getting some XP up. Even inspires on destruction of a node. Looks like Rice Muncher dropped one of his scouts while I wasn't paying attention somewhere. Which happens often. Ranges down to two models, but they're fine with that. Warlock still level one. Force Commander leveled up with that. Teleporting in and smacking the hell out of stuff, I think. Banshees do have their Exarch. But they still do not want to fight this Dreadnought. And here's a Wraith Lord. He'll happily go toe to toe with a Dreadnought. Don't think he wins that fight, but with the support of other stuff. Is a big threat. Here we go. Does more damage per hit the Wraith Lord, but he attacks slower. And thus has slightly less DPS than a Dreadnought. Devastators live. They do live. Dreadnought was ready to Emperor's Fist those um, Howling Banshees out of there, but they dodged it nicely. Some repairs. Very dangerous place to repair, repair from, Mr. Scouts. Here comes a Wraith Lord, and there goes the Force Commander to do his thing. Uses his battle cry to get those specials. Banshee's going in, but they will be knocked over. Suppression there. On to the Force Commander. And he is eventually persuaded to leave. Wraith Lord also wants to get out of there. Do you ever miss a launcher of Marines? No, you don't. Not on the way. And no Melter Bomb. He needs to start thinking about getting some anti vehicle on the field, Rice Muncher. Does he have a last cannon? No. No anti-vehicle whatsoever, really, apart from the Dreadnought's melee attacks itself. The Sultanists did not like that. 
Massive sword to the back of the air, took one down. 350 to 343, still very, very close on VPs. Both players retaining their units and their armies pretty damn well. And both players going tier three, in fact. Rice Muncher is already there. And I'm sure he's looking to drop some Terminators soonish. What's his dread like? Not that far away. Not that far away on power and wreck either. Assault Terminators can be a pain in the ass for Eldar. But you can't really, you don't really want to send the Wraith Lord onto them. Dark Creepers are a decent choice, but as I mentioned earlier, don't do bonus damage to Super Heavy Infantry Armor, and they obviously can't suppress them with Pinning Fire. So your Council can get stuck in, but then if the Assault Terminators switch to Lightning Claws, they're dead very, very fast. But that might be the way to do it, because if they switch to Lightning Claws, they're much less of a threat to that Wraith Lord. Can send him in much safer. Smack. Webway will now be spotted and taken down. Just need to get right close to it. Those units are already inside the webway, it's just a visual glitch. And it will be taken down and it'll give a lot of XP actually to the Force Commander probably. Let's have a look. Big chunk of XP. Since he did most of the damage to it. Some repairs for the Wraith Lord in fighting shape. Has the Dreadnought leveled? Not quite. Like halfway there. Still no real anti-vehicle ca capabilities in Rice Muncher's army. Happy to just play around a Wraith Lord for now. He does have some Vanguard veterans who can get a um, Power Fist, but they lose the ability to get a Melter Bomb. Which is a pretty big deal. Metal Bombs are, are awesome. Banshees haven't leveled yet either, but they've been preserved pretty damn well considering what's on the field. 2-1 to one now for Rice Muncher. 3 4 eight, two, seven, five, VP lead starting to open up for Tex, but now he's got a 2-1 to one against him. How does he play this? Does he fight him face on or put a little bit of pressure on this VP? Try and make Rice Muncher split his forces. Wraith Lord is getting his Wraith Bone. Doesn't have a shoulder mounted weapon yet. Assault Marines kicking it off. Taking big shots from Dark Creepers now. Big, big shots. And Wraith Lord is right there. They need to run away, I think. That was a very, very risky jump. Tex was set up pretty much fully. But here comes that Force Commander to cause all sorts of devastating problems with that hammer. But yeah, these Vanguard veterans are in big trouble. Banshees are going to chase them. And they are going to take him out, I think. I don't think the Force Commander can stop this happening. One more hit on those guys. Down they go. Vanguard veterans wiped out. Rice Muncher now surely has enough for Terminators. Yes, he does. Does he get them, though? Could also get a Land Raider pretty soon. Here we go. Terminators called in. Surely it's going to be Assault Terminators, but we'll see. Yes, it is. With their Thunder Hammers and Storm Shields, good vehicle damage. Good damage to all targets, really. And a truckload of hit points, 5,400. They can transition into Lightning Claws, which makes them insanely effective against all types of infantry, but they lose their anti-vehicle capabilities. We'll see what he does with them. And we'll see how Tex responds. The Wraith Lord should be fine. I don't think these guys will use their teleport to chase it. No, they don't. He's got some Bright Lances, which will do decently well against the Terminators, although Terminators were recently changed to be medium size and not large size, so they won't be hit 100% of the time by anti-vehicle weapons like Bright Lances, although they'll still get some decent hits on them. Here we go. Trying to do so now with these Bright Lances. We do now have a missile launcher on the Tactical Marines. Purchased pretty late. 275 to 275 evened up on the VPs. Those Dire Avengers trying to repair that Wraith Lord. Glad some problems pathing around there. More Dark Creepers from Tex. That is how he's going to respond to those Terminators. Some more Inferno damage. So again, they'll be doing their full damage. I believe they do like uh, 15 DPS per model, Dark Creepers. So that would be about 19 DPS against Heavy Infantry. But no bonus against these Terminators. Is it going to be enough? Double Bright Lances, double Dark Creepers. If the Wraith Lord can get a few hits, maybe the Banshees can move in too. He's got enough to do it, but that's like everything on these Terminators. Librarian on the way for Rice Muncher. Great support for these Terminators here. And in general. Where are the Devastators at? 
coming from the north. In fact, they're set up up there already, not moving. Force Commander persuaded to leave. Now the Terminator should take a hell of a lot of damage here. Do they have? They must have that teleport still. He wouldn't be doing this. Tex focusing on the tactical marines. Nope, he is now focusing down the Terminators. Has some stuff here that's not firing. Here we go. Now everything's getting shot, and we see their health flying down. But he's able to teleport them out. Kept the Eldar forces occupied and decapped that VP there. What is this? Banshee just bashed the generator, I think, and haven't been given another order over here. So many units for these players to deal with now. Here's a Librarian. Some power melee damage on him. And some great support. Banshees do not want to fight that Dreadnought. What are they up to? They're now retreating out. They'll be alright. They are level 2 now. Have the Dark Creepers leveled up any? No, they haven't. They do have their aspect, these fellas. Bit more damage on them. And pinning fire, which is pretty useful. On-demand suppression is always great and always scales really well. There's Veil of Time on the Terminator, something the Librarian now starts with. Which is pretty damn useful. Warlock doing a good job, being annoying. But Champion's robe up. Is he going to get out of there okay though? Barely. Judged it very well there, Tex. Wraith Lord is mid, fully repaired up. Is he leveled? Not quite. He does have that Wraith Bone though. Which heals what? 70 hit points per second for 7 seconds. Which is quite a lot of hit points. Is that like 400 or something? 490, I think. Terminators are going back to base, I think, to fully heal up. Ready for the next big fight. Been a lot of manoeuvring from both players. Nobody really wanting to engage and commit to big fights that often. We saw that big fight in the middle, which led to the loss of the Vanguard veterans. Of course, when the teleports in, uses his battle cry, boom. So hard to keep your forces separated to combat that kind of thing. It's going on top. Dreadnought is destroying some Dire Avengers with help from the Librarian. He's got his Psychic Hood. So he can gate of infinity determine it is right up to him here. Doesn't looks like he's gonna. Wraith Lord backing away. Dreadnought is level two with the Dark Age of Technology. So 300 more hit points for this fella, up to 1620 compared to the 1100 of the Wraith Lord who hasn't leveled up yet. It's a big difference in hit points. Big big difference. The Wraith Lord does have that heal over time, which helps it recover from fights, but in the middle of a fight it might not be enough to save it. Librarian is on capping duty. Going to be a 2-1 to one for Rice Muncher. What is this? Just Banshees. Some very brave Banshees fighting a very tough fight here. WTF says, Tex, run! And looks like... Oh, I thought they would get away but there's the teleport. And they still live. The Exar with 10 hit points gets out of there. Pretty unlucky for Rice Muncher though. Not sure if Tex had trouble retreating. Down goes a Dreadnought. Gets caught by double Bright Lances and the Wraith Lord. Not sure if he was paying attention to that Banshee fight. I sure was. And lost sight of it. Big, big win there for Tex. Still has Assault Terminators to deal with. And now a Predator tank on the way for Rice Muncher. What is your population at, Tex? 75, so he's still got room to get some stuff up. He's got a lot of red too. Not that far away from dropping an Eldritch, which could be nasty. Warlock doesn't really want to fight that Force Commander. Level 4. And with Artificer. What was that? That was weird. Did he not disrupt him with that jump? 240 to 231. Still, very, very even on VPs. And this Wraithlord still doesn't have a shoulder mounted weapon, but he's uh, level 2 now. Surely he deserves one. He's done well. They're not that cheap though, I think they're like 30 power to get, so he's probably saving it for a fire prism if he can. Maybe some seer council. Here we see the double dark creepers doing their thing. But uh, here comes the force one to stop their inferno damage party. And they're just going to delete a bright lance here, yes they are. Ouch. And now move in on the Wraith Lord actually. Wraith Lord does have melee resistance. So that's a 40% reduction in melee damage received. But those guys are still a big, big threat. 
Webway Gate is up. He's using the healing ability of it to heal up the Warlock a little bit. Is he going to get involved here? Only does regular melee damage, which Super Heavy Infantry does have resistance to. With the Merciless Switchblade. They don't have resistance to power melee weapons, though, in fact. They won't like that one bit. Gate of Infinity gets them out of there from the Librarian. Done well so far with his Terminators. Used them well. Picked his fights. Predator tanks now on the field. Long range fire support. Now we'll see how Man of Faith deals with it. Lost his Dire Avengers, of course. Lost one of the Bright Lances. And now gets a D cannon on the way. Did not expect that as the choice. Got some crazy physics going on with one of the Eldar models there. Wraith Lord's in trouble with missile launch attack to Marines and a Predator tank chasing it down. There is the Wraith Bone. Trying to desperately keep this guy alive, but I don't think he's going to make it out of that. Couple more shots, maybe even one more shot from that tank, and down it goes. Yeah, down it goes. This D kind of needs to do a hell of a lot for Tex here. Because Rice Muncher looking very strong with Predator and Terminators up. Bullock being chased down here puts his champion's robe up, but. Tank is still going to keep chasing. One to one cap. It's got that webway at the top. Doesn't want to give away its position. We don't see any. Uh... Oh, these scouts do have a sergeant actually, so they can spot it if they get within range. Some repairs now for that predator tank. How does Tex respond here? He's got a divide and conquer, right? Doesn't really have the resources to get anything tasty up. Rice Punch is not, not capping this VP for some reason. Maybe he thinks something scary is up there. Maybe he knows the webway's up there. Doesn't want a, lot, a bunch of stuff getting out of that webway. And uh, doing a bunch of damage to his Terminators. Force Bonner continues to be a threat. With that teleporter hammer combo. Taking like half an army almost there. To just get him off the field. It's such a powerful combo. Down goes the webway and Terminators are on capping duty. How does he approach this fight if he does approach the fight? Warlock, I think, might be going straight to um, Rice Muncher's natural VP from the look of his trajectory here. Gonna run into some Marines. <laughs> Marines don't want that fight at all. Spotted the Banshees and the Warlock. Champion's Robe, can he use the leap to get in on those devs? I don't think so. Wow, nice smite on those Dark Reapers blobbed up there. Big, big damage. They were trying to get down to damage the. Um, Devastators, I think. Oh, Banshee's a big threat to that Librarian. And here's that Force Commander again. They come off the field. Now they can go decap the VP. These guys are sitting up here looking after this VP. And there's some more Terminators on the field for Rice Muncher getting their very dangerous assault cannon. So, 2 to 1, 180. Dark Creeper's doing their thing. They haven't been super, super effective. Got a level 2 squad and a still a level 1 squad. They haven't been like deleting things, but Rice Muncher has been recognizing their threat very early and getting stuff out of there. Hasn't been. Oh, talk about. They haven't been deleting things. They just deleted a Devastator squad there. Using their pinning fire to slow them down. I'm just going to say how well Rice Muncher has responded to, to the Dark Creepers not gaining sustained firefights with them, but got caught there. 215175. Warlock can now tie up these uh, tactical marines. Might get a model off them. They're not careful. I don't think Rice Munch is watching these marines here. If that Warlock stayed in play, I think he might have killed him. He was scared off by the uh, base turrets. Predator tank doing its thing. Banshee's dying on retreat, but they again live. Level 3 now. All but the X up taken out. This is a really tough fight for Tex against double Terminators, Predator Tank and a scary level 5 Force Commander. But does he have the firepower to deal with double Terminators? I don't think he does. I mean Dark Creepers with a valiant effort here but Terminators can just back away unless they stand around taking all those shots. Singularity or rather, that was just a D kind of shot. This is the Singularity, I believe. 
Not close enough, though, to put anything in. Avatar of Kane on the way. That's pretty much his only play, right? I don't think a single fire prism is going to cut it. Especially with that Predator tank around that could get the last cannons up. He needs this Avatar to do some work. 171, 159, double cap for Rice Muncher. He needs his VP pack too. Dark Creeper is trying to force the Force Commander off the field as quickly as they can, so he can't do a lot of this stuff. Dark Creepers are heavy infantry, so they will have some protection against the piercing damage of the Terminators. But then they were kind of out of position there. Warlock being very brave. Taking on all comers here with his Champion's Rope and Merciless Witchblade, but they might be raised Terminators. They still have Power Fists, so messing with them in melee is not always the best idea. Although dedicated melee units are usually quite a big threat to those Terminators. Teleporting in and disrupting at will is this Force Commander here. That was really annoying. And the Librarian now can get a decap. 131, 159. Avatar of Kane hits the field, but will it be enough? Super unit for Eldar gives some great buffs to surrounding allied infantry. Gives them suppression immunity, I believe. And a damage buff, I think. I always forget exactly what this guy does in terms of his buffs. But as as well as his as well as his buffs, he's got some pretty nasty combat abilities. There's Distort Field on those Banshees, trying to help them cap as a global ability of the Warlock giving them some damage resistance from ranged attacks and they do get the cap and there's the retreat he might have been better off just fleeting to the north after he capped that but he did get away as it stands there's a nice wailing doom disrupting some terminators and doing some good damage too triple one one five nine it's very close pretty tense here gave infinity getting those guys out of trouble Although they're going straight back into trouble here with some strange animations. That guy's sliding. He did have to travel through the warp there, so um Damage going in. Uh oh, Warlock's gonna die. Oh, he gets away. The tank was slightly more forward, could have got one more shot on him. Avatar doing well so far, keeping us terminators at bay. I mean these guys. With their piercing weapons won't be super effective against the avatar he's got 5600 hit points of super half infantry armor which is good resistance against piercing damage and he's he's keeping those guys busy that's for sure but um tex needs vps here's a tank not sure what it's up to running into some banshees who do have that heavy melee weapon tank should be all right though it's getting shots as it backs off it yeah, it is all right. Dark Creeper's staying as a unit. We're we'll trying to catch something off guard as they did with those Devastators. Scouts helping out these Terminators here. Just going to patrol up this east side, I think. Keep an eye on this VP. Librarian going to come under some melee attacks, is he? I think the Avatar's actually going for the Force Commander. Yeah, he's going straight for that force commander there. 66, 159, Rice Muncher keeping up this 2-1 to one cap here. He's got tons of resources, but uh, can't really get anything on the field of only 8, pop 3. Man of Faith has some good power, but um, Tex needs some requisition to get something up here. Could get a Fire Prism relatively soon-ish, but will that be quick enough? Or Tark is dropped in. That's going to give him some capping power. Not sure how it's how she's going to do in actual fights. Could get the fusion gun and try and chase down that tank, I guess. Avatar's down to half hit points. Might want to go back and heal up. Look how quick that Autark is on her feet. She's going to die pretty quickly, though. Down she goes. Two Laz cannons to her shoulder blades there. Took her out. Tex might be conceding defeat here. 32 to 159. He just can't get through that wall of Terminators, can he? And Rice Munch has been very diligent with looking after his VPs. Takes down those Banshees. Those Banshees did so well, though. Oh, I think he's 
He's lamenting the fact that these uh, Predator Laz Cannon hit his Autark pretty reliably there. A few times, I think. Wailing Doom, bad news for those Marines. Almost took him out. If they weren't leveled up to three, they would have been gone, but they're still gone anyway. 11 to 159. This tank has done so well for Rice Muncher too. Dark Creeper's shooting at this single model of Terminator, but uh, here come the Assault Fellas to put some hurt on them. And there's the 2 to 1, and there is the victory for Rice Muncher. With a level 3 Warlock at the end who went down trying to get his VP. Level 6, Force Commander, that was a massive threat. Tex really struggled to uh, control this guy, but I mean, how do you do it when he can just teleport on you? You're going to teleport on your units that are meant to control him and uh, knock them all over. There you have it guys, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.